drops in everyone. Thoracic lumbar fractures are probably the most common fractures that we see in the lumbar spine. And I'm going to talk of management of thoracic lumbar fractures. The objective of this talk is to study the personality of the fractures, classify them, operate versus conserve, approach to surgery, decides on the signals for fixations, and decide to fuse or not to fuse. The reason why we have fractures more at the the junction is due to the transition zone that that is seen between the kyphosis and the larosis. The lumbar spine is less stiff in flexion. And this transition zone predisposes to failure. There is a central loading force that acts at the thoracic junction leading to fractures. Classifications are too many and uh, one gets confused by it. You have the Dennis classification, the AO classification, the TLICS classification. So what is, uh, how do we identify instability? How, or rather, how do we define instability? Clinical instability is the loss in the ability of the spine under physiologic loads to maintain the relationship between vertebra in such a way that there is neither damage nor subsequent irritation to the spinal cord or nerve roots. Spine Trauma Study Group has defined three categories. Mechanical stability suggested by morphology of the injury, long-term stability indicated by the integrity of the PLC or the neuro neurological stability indicated by the presence or absence of deficit. Clinical examination is divided into epiconus when the fracture is uh, above D12, conus metaris when the fracture is D12, L1, L2, colloquina when the fracture is below L2. Treatment, medical is mainly with steroids, augmented with bracing. Surgical is instrumentation and decompression. The medical management, the primary insult is the insult that or the damage that happens to the core at the time of the injury, and this is non-modifiable. Secondary is something that can be treated or can be modified rather, is due to vascular dysfunctions, edema, ischemia, electrolyte shifts, free radical production, inflammation, delayed cell deaths. A lot of, a lot of uh, drugs are used, including steroids, gangliosides, naloxones, calcium channel blockers, free radical scavengers, and neurotrophic agents. A word about methylprednisolone, a drug that's so widely used. And there are some studies uh, to show that if it is used within the first three to eight hours for about injury, then there is some neurological recovery, but it remains a big controversy. Some centers use it regularly and some do not at all. If it is used in 30 milligrams per kg body weight, a bolus dose followed by 5.4 milligrams per kg per hour for 24 hours if the injury is presented by three hours and for 48 hours, it was presented by eight hours. Bracing is mainly used in fractures that are stable without any deficit. There are many types of brace available, TLSO brace, Chevet brace, Android brace. It's normally worn for about three to six months, depending on the fractures, and it's only initiated when there is clinical and radiographic evidence of fracture healing. But the big question still remains, does bracing really help? One really doesn't know. Coming to the morphological algorithm, surgery or no surgery is very individualized depending on the fracture. But if it's an A0, A1, A2, then normally you know, need surgery. But if it's an A3, A4 unstable burst fracture or a type B or a type C fracture, then surgery is indicated. The goals of the surgery is to achieve and maintain and come the reduction stability. You have a neural element decompression, immediate mobilization, and early rehabilitation. 
Timing of surgery this is very important. It was below 24 hours, 24 to 7 hours, more than 7 hours. And there was a study that was published in the AO Spine where they concluded that the earlier the decompression, the better it is. Timing of surgery also decides the surgical procedure. If it's less than two weeks, then posterior surgery works well with low risk of plant failure. But if it's more than two weeks, then additional implant support to prevent kyphosis or for kyphosis correction and late implant failure. Anterior approach gives you direct visualization and decompression of neural elements, restores anterior column and corrects the kyphosis. Contraindicated in PLC insufficiency, osteoporosis, in patients who are obese with severe pulmonary disease or low lumbar fractures. Posterior approach is the most commonly used approach. It's easy, reliable, safe, gives indirect canal clearance, you can correct the kyphosis. But you can also have a late kyphosis if you fail to construct, reconstruct the anterior column. There are many ways you can reduce a fracture. It's postural, you have the free pen rods, cantilever by putting a metal texas. Reverse cortical sign is when the rectal fragments is rotated more than 180 degrees severe ligamentous disruptions and it's a contraindication to ligament taxes. There are some instances where you have to clean the canal posteriorly. Or this, when there's a fracture of the corners with the posterior failure and deficit with canal intrusion, we don't have to or should not uh, retract the dura cord and the fragments just tamper back into the body. Short, long, or intermediate depends on the type of the fracture and the patient. But when there is a type B injury, then it has to be a long level stabilization because it's three column fracture, mainly see neck and spondylitis or dish. Anterior posterior approach. So fractures in thoracic or the thoracic lumbar uh, region L with failure of the posterior tension band and significant anterior injury with or without retropulse ventral fragment and right with severe canal stenosis fusion has its advantages because you can restore the stability of the spine. Suppose the implant rather than the implants of the bone. In young patients, you can have a short segment stabilization, prevents implant failure. And implants can be removed after fusion, especially in young patients. So the whole idea is to reconstruct the anterior column because if we do not reconstruct the column, then this is what you get. Type C injuries, main cause of neural deficit is the initial impact. Prognosis is poor. Role of decompression is doubtful. Many surgeons only stabilize. Percutaneous fixations, uh, in patients who have no neurological deficits, intact uh, PLCs, type A3, A4 fractures. But where there is appeals in surgery or where there were fractures where you need to decompress and there are situations where one should not uh, try percutaneous. The downside is it's not very cost effective and a lot of radiation support. You have a balloon assistant reduction in cement augmentations. It can be utilized with open surgery or or percutaneous uh, fixations can avoid an actor or a combined approach. The take-home messages: 
detailed clinical and, and radiology examinations must identify fracture morphology and PLC status and classify individualized treatment. If surgery, always reconstruct and get a good height of the entry. Thank you.